Fall weather finally arrived in Seattle, so I took advantage of IFR and marginal VFR conditions to fly the Bonanza on a short hop from Boeing Field to Arlington. A glitch meant that I didn't capture ATC or intercom audio on this flight, so instead I'll use this video to explain some of the techniques and procedures that I use on a typical IFR flight, and I'll explain how I dealt with an unexpected curve during the approach at Arlington. A flight from Boeing Field to Arlington in the Bonanza typically involves only about 20 minutes in the air. Under IFR, it's important to manage the workload, updating the pre-flight briefing with the latest information, obtaining an IFR clearance, setting up the airplane and avionics, flying a departure procedure, and being ready to begin an approach as soon as you level off. For example, before I even start the engine, I call the phone numbers for the ATIS or AWOS at my departure and destination and fill in the four flight scratch pads. That way I have the basic information and I can quickly confirm the current ATIS letter and update the one minute weather when I contact ATC before takeoff and as I begin the approach that I want to fly, based on the wind and other details. During pre-flight planning, I also annotate charts. Marking up a chart makes me slow down and carefully review important details about a procedure. The colors note critical altitudes, distinguish between different minimums, and help me develop a plan for how I'll use various navigation sources as I fly. You can find a detailed presentation about my system for annotating charts in the Presentations for Pilots playlist at my YouTube channel. After engine start, I display the four-flight craft scratch pad for my IFR clearance. Based on the expected route and other information that I gather during planning, I fill in most of the details before I contact clearance delivery. Then, as I listen to the controller, I check each item that matches what I've already noted and fill in the squawk code and any changes to the clearance that I receive. IFR takeoff from Boeing Field always involves a SID. And because runway 14 right was in use this day, I flew the Nirvana 1 RNAV departure. It's essentially a fly runway heading clearance to a top altitude of 2,000 feet. As soon as tower hands you off to departure control, light pistons like my Bonanza are typically cleared to 4,000 feet and then vectored off the procedure toward your first in route fix. On short local flights that remain in Seattle Approach Control's airspace, just after you switch from tower, the departure controller asks if you have the destination weather and notams and your approach request. If you called the AWOS or ATIS on the phone before you asked for takeoff clearance, you don't have to scramble to collect that information during the busy departure phase of flight. I requested the RNAV runway 34 approach at Arlington. It's the best approach at that airport, offering straight in LPV minimums to a DA of 200 feet above the runway, just like an ILS. As expected, ATC cleared me direct to Savoy, 
an initial approach fix directly ahead, so I loaded the procedure with that fix as the transition. And because I anticipated a straight in clearance, I chose not to include the course reversal. That's usually a good technique. But as you'll see, on this day I should have followed my usual practice of loading the entire procedure, including the hold in lieu of procedure turn. As I approached Savoy, ATC instructed me to fly the charted hold outbound. A Cessna 172 was well ahead of me on the procedure, and I had slowed down but the controller wanted to keep more space between us. She was also watching a VFR target in the area, and she said she'd delay my turn inbound to assure separation. I could have reloaded the approach with the hold at Savoy, but I decided to fly the outbound leg in heading mode, using the map and my chart to ensure that I would stay on the appropriate track. Not strictly by the book, but a good compromise in this situation. Still, if I had loaded the approach with the hold in lieu of procedure turn at Savoy, I could have tracked the outbound leg in heading mode and, when ATC turned me inbound, easily proceeded direct Savoy or activated the leg between Savoy and the next fix, Yeku. Arlington is a non-towered airport, so it's your responsibility to cancel IFR when you're safely and legally able to do so. When the controller cleared me to change to the CTAF, she instructed me to cancel in the air with her or on the ground through the clearance delivery frequency at Arlington. Here's another reason to annotate charts. When I plan an IFR flight to or from a non-towered airport, I look up the ATC phone number or clearance delivery frequency in the chart supplement. I add that information to the airport diagram and approach charts. That way I have those details readily available, even when they're not printed by default on the charts. Now enjoy the final approach and landing at Arlington on the first gray, wet day in the Pacific Northwest this fall. It was nice to see typical marginal VFR in clouds and mist, not because of smoke. Two mile final runway three four. Five hundred. 